Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Robbins, and welcome to Life, Death, and the Space Between podcast. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and medium, and here we explore life, death, consciousness, and what it all means. If you missed my show on Thursday, go ahead and listen to that before listening to this ghost story or listen to the ghost story and let it whet your appetite for that show. Basically, what we are talking about here is people who have had spiritual experiences that sort of tread the line between a spiritual experience and mental illness. So I'm sharing with you a story today from a listener, and I just want you to be open-minded and think about what this could mean for both mental illness and spirituality. Also, if you have your own ghost story to share, you know I love your ghost stories, please email them to me at dramyrobbins at gmail.com or DM me and I will sort of direct you as to what exactly I need. You can DM me on Instagram at dramyrobbins. Okay, here's today's ghost story. Growing up, I always felt that I had a strong presence around me. I grew up in a Catholic family that made me very afraid of religion. As I got older, I began to experience a lot of events that seemed too odd to be coincidental. I experienced my first auditory hallucination when I was about 12 years old. I heard loud dogs barking clear as day. We lived in a multifamily house which didn't allow dogs, so this scared me. This was also around the time I stopped praying and believing in a higher power. I was convinced that there was evil all around me, so I decided to try to block it out. Through my youth, I was very shy and felt very awkward around people. The depression and anxiety I felt was because I had low self-esteem and that resulted in weight gain. In my late teens, I started experimenting with psychedelics. That's when I started sensing all this energy around me. As I went through the stages, I opened myself up to other dimensions, but always felt something pulling me back. My family was a big part of this. They, unfortunately, instilled fear in me. You see, the Catholic view of God is very different from what I see and feel now. I never really felt connected or truly happy. I've been on many vacations and have seen many beautiful sights, but I always felt jaded. I've gotten the chance to experience different cultures and still felt separated from people. I remember going to the Mexican ruins and wanting to feel something. I felt very little. It really killed my spirit. When I came back home, I remember posting pictures and telling my friends it was an amazing experience, when in fact, the reality was hell for me. A little history on me, I was the first of my family to be brought up in America. My family is from Colombia. I never realized how connected I was to Mother Nature. In my mid-twenties, I did DMT ayahuasca. It was one of the most profound experiences I had ever gone through. I met my biggest demons. I had an early traumatic experience as a kid that I never talked to anyone about. I've been plagued with all sorts of strange addictions ever since. I remember going into the darkness and seeing this woman figure looking directly into my eyes telling me to let go. I was afraid yet calm. She wouldn't let me go as I went through my short psychedelic experience. As I came out of my trip, I remember being completely in awe. I was speechless. I thought to myself, did this just really happen? Sadly, I abused drugs as a way to cope with what was happening to me. I could not understand. During that time, I started experiencing more auditory hallucinations, hearing my name being called out. Now, I can identify those as nature spirits, but then, Every time I started to hear voices, I'd start abstaining from mind-altering stimulants. In 2017, I went through a major surgery that would change my life dramatically. I had double jaw surgery. The healing process took six weeks. I was on a very restricted diet that consisted of mostly liquids. Having body image issues, I ended up learning losing 30 pounds in the span of six weeks. I also wasn't taking my pain meds. 
This led me to my first experience with mental illness. I had a manic episode, but also felt complete oneness with spirit. I took a trip to New York City that changed my life. I felt invincible and started making incredible connections. All of the sudden, my fears were completely obliterated. I didn't sleep at all during that three-day weekend. When I arrived back home, I noticed a sensitivity to my parents' emotions. I was able to feel my mom's anxiety. I also had deeper religious experiences. In retrospect, I now see I was having a psychotic episode. At this point, I packed my bags and told my family I was leaving. I felt a strong desire to leave my past and create a new life. On November 23rd of 2017, I went into the forest to find myself, and I was in an alter state of consciousness. I went on a journey that resulted in me emerging into water in the forest in the middle of the night. I felt completely alone and at peace. Time didn't exist. I was there for what felt like eternity, but it was not long at all. It was 27 degrees that night, but nothing seemed to affect me. Once I was out of my trance, I walked back home to find the police talking to my family. My family was understandably worried about what was happening to me. I remained completely peaceful as everyone asked me what and why I had done. I was psychiatrically hospitalized, and it was here I gave my first reading as a medium. When I arrived at the behavioral unit, I felt out of control for the first time ever. But I also felt a tremendous sense of calm around me from the spirit realm and I recognized that I was not well. I was put on medication and felt tremendous anxiety. It was difficult to listen to the other stories of people on the unit. Seeing other people in the group in total misery left me feeling that I was gonna have the same fate. The months after my hospitalization got worse, I started binging on sugar and foods that I now know trigger psychosis and can further induce mental problems. I was able to find a natural route to treatment that I feel saved me. I learned that the food I ate could make my symptoms worse. For so long, the messages that were coming from spirit were scary to me, and I didn't really know what to do with them. I can now receive clear messages from spirit and my guides who were showing me what to do all along. I now follow a very strict diet. I am as organized as I can be. I work out daily and keep busy to do the work I am supposed to do. The dark presence that had been haunting me, I now understand to be my native ancestors who have been calling my name since I was a child. I stand here a healthy, vibrant 28-year-old man ready to teach what I have learned. I still have a long way to go, but I feel honored and grateful to be able to tell my story. I'm going to protect his name just because that's what I do. Uh, But I am so just moved by the way this story sort of weaves in and out of the questions that we talk about on the podcast last Thursday, which was, what is our perception of reality? How do we understand reality? How do we understand these perceptions in certainly in the realm of psychology and psychiatry and when we're diagnosing mental illness, what does that mean? Is mental illness maybe on a spectrum and not necessarily as cut and dry as the DSM and symptoms would have us believe that they are? And I certainly am espousing more and more and more to that theory. I think that so many people have these these perceptual experiences, whether they're auditory or visual, that just don't necessarily fit that criteria, but we have to explain them and we have to give people a voice to talk about them because to live with that reality and to be scared of it is not how we heal. So thank you all for listening. Again, please subscribe to my podcast if you don't. Please follow me on Instagram if you don't at Dr. Amy Robbins and uh, subscribe to my newsletter as well. Dr. Amy Robbins at, G- at DrAmyRobbins.com. And lastly, if you could please contribute to my Patreon, 
It's just a way for you to support the podcast. Any little bit helps. And I am so, so grateful for every, for all of you just for listening, honestly. But if you could support it, I am equally as grateful. So thank you all and have a wonderful day. Like what you heard today and want to hear more? Wondering what comes next and what it all means? Head over to Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts and hit subscribe. Also, if you could take a minute to rate and review my podcast, I would really appreciate it. Stay tuned as we continue to explore life, death, and the space between.